Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. So today I think I'm going to answer some questions about aquaponics. Uh, in our earlier videos, when we first moved on the homestead, we constructed an aquaponics system and it was a pretty large system. Uh, I, from what I could tell, it was probably one of the largest off-grid aquaponics systems in the country. Um, it was a very large aquaponics system. Off-grid. Off-grid is the key. Off-grid, completely off-grid, uh, meaning we're supplying our own electricity, our own water, everything. And um, it, it was very popular. Aquaponics was all the rage for a long time. Maybe still is. I don't see a lot of people doing it anymore, really, on the homestead channels that I that I uh, frequent. But um, I kind of wanted to give an, a rundown on aquaponics, why I don't do it anymore, um, so what were some of the challenges that you face when you do aquaponics, uh, and that may give a reason why. It's just because there's a lot of people who leave comments. Hey, Zach, you know, when are you going to do an update on your aquaponics? Are you still doing your aquaponics? You know, things like that. And uh, those it comes up fairly often. So I figured I'd do a video. And for those of you who are thinking about doing aquaponics, because there's still people I see who are getting into the homestead community who had this idea of maybe doing it or trying, trying it out. Aquaponics uh, is very maintenance heavy. It requires constant maintenance. And as you do homesteading for a while, you realize that you prefer to find things, way production means to produce things on your homestead. And you, you, you realize that you want to try to find things that are low maintenance because things take a lot of time and effort to upkeep. Um, and so aquaponics is very maintenance heavy. It requires a lot of maintenance, a lot of time. Um, the big reason why we don't do aquaponics anymore these days is because it requires a lot of water. Uh, right now, most days are around in the 90s. Uh, sometimes we're hitting 100 degrees. Mostly it stays around the 90s, but uh, mid to upper 90s during the dog days of summer like we're in right now in the middle of July. And we were going through, when we were doing our aquaponics, we were doing around, we were basically averaging about 250 gallons of evaporation per week. 250 gallons of evaporation per week to keep that system running. It was a pretty intensive system. And it just get, it got to be too much. In the dog days of summer, when you're losing that much water, you better have a major water source to be able to replenish your aquaponics system. And we tried doing that from our well for a while. We do we do water transfers with our little pickup truck in a 250 gallon tank, and we top it off once a week when the water levels got low. When that water is constantly running in this sort of heat, especially if you're using it in sort of any, in any sort of a greenhouse where the heat's even more intensive, um, you're going to lose a lot of water. That water's always running, it's always moving, and evaporation really takes its toll. So it just got to be too much got to be too much and the, re the reality is aquaponics is, is an amazing concept it does produce good food a lot of food and um, the, the system where you're taking uh, fish water water that that is you have these tanks where the fish are growing and you're pumping that that fish water that poopy fish water out of the, uh, of your tanks over your your grow beds it's it's a good system it works absolutely it works we got a lot of we got a lot of good food out of it and the fish, you know, unless you're living very far south where you can grow tilapia, you, you know, you're gonna, you're not going to get the fish production you think you're going to get. If you're living in the deep south where the, it's not going to freeze, it's not going to get below temperatures of 60 degrees, um, 60 degrees is the m lowest you'd ever want it to get to. <clears throat> but if you're like living in like south florida or the, the florida keys or maybe even the deep south of mississippi, you might be able to get to that where it never gets below those temperatures, your fish are going to, if you're, if you're growing tilapia, if you're anything, uh, getting any lower than 60 degrees, your, your tilapia are going to die, period. So you look at for other alternatives, and the fat, the other fastest growing alternative that we found was um, hybrid bluegill. Uh, hybrid bluegill, if you don't know, is basically a bluegill and a sunfish mated together, and um, they can grow pretty fast. It takes about two years to get good size. Um, but two years, whereas tilapia, you can get tilapia to grow full size in like seven or eight months. Anyway, all that to say, you don't get a lot of fish production where we're at because we definitely get below temperatures. We can't keep tilapia alive and you have to use hybrid bluegill. So with the amount of evaporation 
and the low amount of fish production that you get, it just be, it just becomes something that is, is going to be really hard to do, really hard to upkeep and really hard to maintain. So the big things are water evaporation, high maintenance. You cannot, you have to go out to that system every day, check on it to make sure it's running well, make sure it's going, going the way you need it to go. Uh, you're addressing any issues and problems that you may have with your pumps, uh, with whatever. Uh, obviously the water evaporation too. The only way I could see making this happen and making it continue to work would be to have around 5,000 gallon water capacity set aside for that system. The most the longest drought we've ever had here since we've been here is about three months with no rain. So if you're produce, if just to be safe, 5,000 gallon capacity would probably be okay to, to be able to maintain that uh, and have some leeway. But if you don't have that ability, the only way you can do aquaponics is to be on grid to where you have a constant water supply, uh, a municipal water supply that you can use for your fish and at that point then you got to filter the system because if you're on a municipal water supply you're going to be dealing with issues on uh, chlorine in the water and whatever chemicals they're putting in the water and that's not really good for your fish nor is it good for your plants and so now you have that issue of filtering water and all that stuff so what it comes down to is it was just too maintenance heavy too much maintenance and so that's why we don't do aquaponics anymore um, but again, does aquaponics work? Absolutely, yes, it does. Um, produces great food. It's a great production, but it's maintenance heavy. And again, when you're doing homesteading stuff and you've built this infrastructure and you're trying to get as much food production as possible, uh, you're trying to find things that are going to still produce for you and have the least amount of maintenance so that you can produce that food. Everything requires maintenance, guys. Everything requires maintenance on the homestead. Your garden requires maintenance. Your water supplies require... Everything requires maintenance, but you're trying to find the things that are going to have the least amount of maintenance possible so you can get still good production out of it. And aquaponics just isn't that, isn't that for us. But we, at one time, I think we had probably a, a pretty good sized system. A lar the largest personally owned off-grid aquaponics system probably in the country. I know there's there's been some other... There's amazing aquaponics systems I see out there. I don't know if all of, them, all of them are still running. Back in the day when I was really into the aquaponics tech and I was looking at other people and other corporations who were doing aquaponics, there were so many. I don't know if these corporations are still doing it, if they're still finding it as a viable means to produce food or not. Um, it's a very neat, innovative concept, but just requires a lot of maintenance. Anyway, so that's, uh, that's our aquaponics. Why are we not doing aquaponics anymore? Too much water, too much water evaporation, and um, maintenance heavy. I think, again, the longest drought we've ever gone through here is three months without any rain. Uh, every, you basically have to rely on those spotty summer thunderstorms that come and maybe drench you, uh, and that's just not guaranteed here. We get our early rains, which means spring rains and, you know, the late rains, fall, fall rains, that they're pretty consistent. We usually get about 50 inches of rain a year, which is actually more than some parts of Hawaii, believe it or not. Some parts of Hawaii don't get even 50 inches of rain a year. Some people, some parts of Hawaii get lots of rain a year. It just depends on what island you're at and what part of the island you're at um, and the weather systems out there. Uh, I have a sister who lives in Hawaii, but um, you get you get a lot of rain in some places, but... For the Ozarks, we get a lot of rain. It's just in those dog days of summer, you just don't get some so much in, in the July, August, especially June, July, August, sometimes even September. Um, but that's why. So if you want to do aquaponics, just know those things. If you're interested in looking into that technology, it does produce well for you, but it's maintenance heavy. So, all right, guys, I thought I'd just do a rundown on it because I got another comment the other day and I get those comments pretty regular questions pretty regular and i figured i'd address it all right guys if you have any questions about aquaponics leave them in the comments below i'll try to address those and i can see if i can answer them um and um we had a pretty good system when it ran it had it had its day but i've moved on to other things so there you go all right guys see you next time in the homestead be sure to check out our teespring links down in the description below youtube for some reason has removed our ability to put the t-shirts below the videos i don't know why they've done that but uh, if you want to support the homestead, you can get a link. Our um, Stupid Should Hurt shirt is our best-selling shirt. A lot of people have bought that shirt. And um, 
Uh, you can check out the links in the description below for Teespring if you're interested in one of the shirts or some of our other shirts like Farm Fresh Butt Nuggets, our farm hair don't care. Very popular shirts as well. So, all right, guys, see you next time in the homestead. Bye. Hey, guys, I'm happy to introduce an American homestead sponsor, Zervita Zeal. Now, first off, I only accept sponsors from products that I use and believe in. My family uses Zeal mainly because we want to ensure a healthy immune system. You see, it's made up of only whole food concentrates and includes no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. The included sweetener is all natural from fruit and the stevia leaf. It's gluten-free, it's vegan, and it's kosher. In 2018, my youngest son was involved in a bike accident that resulted in the surgical removal of his spleen, and that's an important part of his immune system. And because we live on a farm, you can guess that having a healthy immune system for our family is very important. Some of the included ingredients are beetroot, chicory root, turmeric, moringa, blueberries, cranberry, goji berry, milk thistle, ginseng, alfalfa, broccoli, and so much more. It's these natural ingredients that can easily be made into a powerful and tasty drink that my family can make and feel good about. So sign up and give it a try today. Every purchase you make goes to help the homestead so that we can continue to make great homesteading videos for you. Link is in the description below. Go ahead, give it a try. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>